All right, so hi guys. It's more time for late night Michi audio because that just seems to be my life right now. But I was feeling, you know, I don't exactly want this to be an art video. I want it to be a separate, you know, topic video because it is a topic video. And not that it can't be an art miss video. It's just, mm, I'd rather, you know, this go up the same day I'm recording it or the same week I'm recording it. Depending on how my microphone acts, because right now my face is really close to the microphone and it's barely reading. Just great. But I want to talk about comfort characters and comfort stories for a hot second, because I'm seeing it come more and more into light where people are talking about it, but they're not explaining it properly or they're not they're not helping other people understand what a comfort character or a comfort story is. It should be self-explanatory, but I've learned living in this day and age in the magical year of 2020 that that there's like 80% of the human population that was born without common sense. So I'm sorry if uh, that's offensive to you, but that's also why I'm here. I'm here to help people try to understand it into a better sense. Especially, I have to keep reminding myself that while it is common sense and common knowledge for me as someone who's been online for many, many, many years, it is not for others. And with that being said, let's get into the topic of the video. So, a comfort character or a comfort story or a comfort movie, comfort show, a comfort medium brings comfort to things like this. I talked about that when I made my Harry Potter video earlier this year. And I also talked about how a very big important thing, especially when it comes to other media, because ironically enough, a lot of my characters are no longer comfort characters for me. They used to be when I was younger, when I was in like middle school and high school. But that's not the case anymore. And I find myself more and more into adulthood latching onto other people's stories and other people's things for when I was in a hard time. And I'm going to use myself as a perfect example here is earlier this year in February of 2020, in early February, a loved family member died due to um, sex by Giron Boy before it was big in the U.S. and before we had a lot of information on it. And it sucked and it was terrible. And I remember very clearly that there was a book that I wanted to get that was coming out. I'd say, I think it came out about a, a week after she passed away, or if not, it was within that time frame, and I needed a distraction. So I got that book, because this was also my first experience. I, I, I don't want to say my first personal experience with death, because my own grandmother technically passed away back in 2015, 2015, 2014. Um... But uh, my relationship with her was very complicated, so it wasn't the same as it was with um, this other this other grandparent, who um, ironically enough wasn't even mine. But I'd, I'd known this woman for, you know, nearly twelve years, and I loved her, and it hurt. And I am a big Sarah J. Mass fan. I've talked about this, and Crescent City was coming out. And I really, really wanted a distraction. Now, when I was reading Crescent City, um, by the way, <laughs> not spoilers for Crescent City, it's kind of the basic point of the book, but um, the story deals with um, the loss of a loved one and a loved one that's a, a, a best friend and like a sister. And while I was never that close to the, the family member, it was... It was, I don't want to say it was nice because it's not a nice feeling, but while I was reading it and, and all of its issues, because trust me, it is not a perfect book. I didn't want to put it down. It, 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 it really sucked me in and it helped me in those hard times. I remember reading it um, when uh, we were, we were in an olive garden, my whole family, like my, my whole family, my whole family, and I was reading it in the Olive Garden because we were waiting a long time to get seated and I remember everyone being there and talking about things and and feeling feeling that loss and ironically enough I remember there was a chapter where Bryce was feeling that where Bryce is that main character in that book and it really resonated with me and I I think because I've wanted to reread it but every time I try I, I keep remembering 
where I was when I read it. And I know it's because it was earlier in the year, but it's also because I remember the memories towards that. And like I said, it's not a perfect book, but I, it it's going to always hold a special place in my heart for, for being a small light in a very dark tunnel. And ironically enough, that character also dealing with loss and acceptance and you know, friendship and, and new beginnings. And that was something that I had to deal with, you know? And so I think back to a lot of my other favorite stories, stories that I think of and while the stories in themselves were just kind of okay they hold such a deep part in my in my soul because of where i was in my life when i read them for the first time and that's just the same thing for comfort characters and other comfort media for people it brings us comfort and it it doesn't have to bring us joy but it can be a way to vent it can be a way to have frustrations it can be a, a proper form of escapism now the issues with it though is a lot of people get really defensive get really defensive when their comfort character their comfort thing comes into question. Again, a perfect example I'm going to use right now is Harry Potter. You know, when J.K. Rowling came out with her terrible hurtful speech, uh, people have tried to, you know, negotiate where it's like well she has a right to her opinions you're right she has a right to her opinions and other people have a right to theirs and their feelings are valid and there are a lot of people out there like myself you know where harry potter still has a special place in my heart but it is very different now because of its creator and its writer you know and let's go to other mediums. I know another big uh, book author that's 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 got issues too is um, Cassandra Clare. I only read three books in her entire repertoire. I read another one. I didn't like it. But I want to reread those because I want to know if it's the same thing. Because I still like those stories. But then I remember where I was. And I read all three of the Infernal Devices series in less than a week. I was going through a lot of terrible stuff at home. A lot of stuff that was out of my control and reading the adventures and the problems and the stresses of these characters it really helped me into taking care of my own problems. And that's what it does for a lot of other people. But again, like I said, when our, when our comfort thing becomes problematic, a lot of people get defensive. They get angry. They try to negotiate. They try to rationalize. They try to, you know, convince people about the thing. And here's the problem. People need to stop trying to attack other people's comfort items. But in the same sentence, in the same way, if your comfort story item or whatever is problematic, is upsetting, it has a dark history behind it, you need to be able to acknowledge that. You need to be able to take responsibility with that. You need to be like, yeah, I know. And while I don't contone it, this, 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 this story, this, this object, this character, it still saved me. It still helped me, you know? It's, it's the difference like that. And it's the fact that we need to, as adults and people, be able to do both. You know, um, I know a, a giant generation of people who are like, I don't get the point. I don't, I don't get the point. Why, 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 why do people do that? Why do people support problematic people? Why do people do that? I, I don't get it. Well, you don't get it because you probably weren't there for it for that person. Like I said, with me in Crescent City, if I tell people, you know, oh yeah, I really like this book. And then I describe it and they're like, mm, okay, it sounds kind of normy, like, I mean, I shouldn't say it's normie, but like, you know, a uh, basic uh, adult, uh, I forget what it's called, but it's that like uh, science fiction that's modernized. I can't think of it. It's not even science fiction. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm already rambling here. Anyway, the, the, I'm pretty sure the basic idea has been done before, you know, but it was there for me. Like the Infernal Devices were, like Akatar was, like Harry Potter was. And those memories mean a lot to me. 
and I'm thinking about a lot about that as we're going into 20, you know, as we're ending 2020. And I'm just remembering things and I'm noticing things in a different light, you know, and that's what it is for a lot of other people. And so when you see people, it's especially hard when your comfort thing starts to get big, you know, like I know a lot of people that really latch on to YouTubers who really latch on to shows who really latch on to things. And then when things don't work out the way they were hoping to, or when things, you know, spiral out of control or things become issues, it hurts them. And it's hard because we as people are like, well, it's a physical thing. How does it hurt you? Well, it's pretty simple, really. If I had something that was really close to my heart and brought me a lot of joy in a very, very dark place. And then I later on found out that the, the work was stolen or copyrighted or the author was terrible. Does that taint the story for me as a person and the experience I had when reading it? For some people it does, but for many it doesn't. But you need to acknowledge when that happens. You need to acknowledge when something is problematic or bad or if it's not great. And that's fine too. We can enjoy bad things if it brings you joy and comfort. And you need to be able to stay calm in the matter. You need to be able to be the better person when it comes down to people trying to attack your thing. I know another really big one is, of all things, Sonic. I, I know it's a meme. I know. But I also grew up on Sonic games and Mario games. You know, I have... A nostalgia for them. I did have many moments where those were things for me. As I've grown up, you know, those have no longer become my things, like I said earlier. My things have become stories. But for other people, it still is. You know, they're into their adulthood and they're still drawing Sonic fan art. They're still playing the games. They're still doing this and that. They're buying the stuff. Are there cringy people out there? Yeah. But some other people are just like, no, this brings me joy and it brings me happiness. And it isn't your right to police what they do with that said thing. Because as long as whoever it is isn't doing something illegal, it shouldn't be. But in the same vein, you shouldn't be just burying your head in the sand. Like I said, I'm going back to Harry Potter. I know a lot of Harry Potter fans that are like, well, I mean, if I boycott her, like, there's nothing going to happen. She's still going to have her McMansion and her millions and, and be a fine. So why can't I go buy Harry Potter things? Why can't I do this and that? Why can't I? No one's stopping you. But you need to be prepared for those conversations if they come up. You know, it's a lot like Star Wars fans, video games fans. We have to deal with that thing. When you are a fan of something and something brings you joy and there is a problematic presence behind it, which is the whole thesis of this video, you have to be willing to accept it, acknowledge it, and be respectful of that. Because if not, then we're just going to be in this screaming match of people and we're just not going to move on. And people aren't going to understand. And people aren't going to get it. And people are going to try to latch on to things. People are going to try to justify things. And you need to be calm, cool, and collected, even if you don't want to be, even if you want to scream and shout and you want to, you don't want to be that, that person, you know, you, you don't want people to yell at you on the internet. You don't want people to belittle you. You don't want people to like, you know, um, belittle your judgment. Well, it's going to happen sometimes if you like something that comes with a problematic stable to it. And can we control that as the consumer and, you know, the, the, uh, uh, <laughs> the other person on the side I don't know what I'm saying here you know I don't know the proper way to say it but if no but it's something that many people need to understand so next time you see you know a young teenager really really latching on to an anime character when they're a young teenager maybe going through something or really enjoying a show let them enjoy the show let them enjoy the thing you want to know why they're probably going through some stuff you don't know about right now. Why are you making fun of the adult that still buys Star Wars stuff? Maybe they were in a bad spot and it brings them honest joy. We need to stop with this like stupid, unruly judgment, but in the same vein, don't not burying our heads in the sand. So I feel like I'm repeating myself here, but I just want to ramble about that for a little bit. 
let me know if anybody else, you know, feels the same way as I do. Um, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and comment for the bot if you can't think of anything to talk about, because that helps so, so much. Thank you, as always, to my Patreon patrons. I love you all so, 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 so much. And as always, guys, I will see you next time. Bye-bye.